don't mind the headlamp. So I need this access hatch. I need one on that side and one up here to access in front of the wheel well when the camper's on a truck. And it's big enough, you can fit the tall seven gallon Reliance, uh, like jerry cans, or even probably the tall desert style like gas cans. So I was sitting here, uh, imagining where uh, everything's gonna go, my little bench seat, and then I thought, you know, if you threw a bag in there, it would make a pretty good emergency little toilet. Do your business, a little sprinkle of sawdust. I don't know where I'd get any sawdust. You're good to go. Hey guys, thanks for following along on my truck camper build. I'd just like to say that power tools can be incredibly dangerous. It's a responsibility to read, learn, understand, and follow all the rules and instructions that come with your power tools. The aim of my videos is to show the process that I'm using to make my truck camper and should not be taken as instruction or guidance. Please don't attempt anything that you see on these videos without proper training and or supervision. Stay safe, everybody. Let's get back to the build. Well, good morning, everyone. Well, it's morning for me. Zooming work on my camper build. Uh, I was uploading a video, so I didn't actually film some of this. Not that I got very far, but I did make some decisions. Uh, I've shortened this window, or I've uh, made it more narrow, because my wood stove is going to go in this area. And uh, so, yeah, so I put a 2x4 in there, some framing, and up in these voids, I'm going to put a piece of 3 quarter inch thick plywood fill it in and that will leave room for a three quarter inch piece of styrofoam insulation that side and also this side so it will help a little bit I had left the original piece if you watched my last video and then I'd added a little spacer block looks kind of funny there's gonna be two little weird pieces of insulation didn't add any real structural plus when I put my window frame on the outside Got a little uh, angled balance to keep water out planned. It'll give you a little extra meat to hit. So that is what I'm gonna cut next, these pieces of plywood. And then I gotta cut some framing members for the rest of my windows. I gotta beep these ones up and I'm gonna go to the table saw and do that now. Trim one end and spin it around, mark it to 30 inches and cross cut them to length. I'm going to cut these to 30 inches. Let's do it. small little trim on this side. Clean the dust out of the corners. So this will add some structural strength as I mentioned before. 
mostly it's going to give me some meat to attach stuff to. Gonna put glue on. I'd like to put it on the top, but by the time you try to slide it in there, to be honest, you're just gonna rub most of it off. So you miss it. So I'm gonna half rub it off because I can't put it in there. Okay. So the problem right now is air. Get some clamps, I think, on this baby. I'm gonna get a few clamps. Okay. Should probably hold that. I'll get one more. This one's a little bit deeper. Probably slight overkill. Just want to make sure this bottom isn't tilting out, so we can check with the measurements. Deep throat clamp. Oh, the editing is going to take. She'll put it on two clamps. I'll be back. Deep throat. Wait. That sounds dirty. Long reach clamps. Okay, there we go. Okay, let this dry probably 15 20 minutes and uh, then I'll scare with a few more fasteners. And do the other side. With all this glue, I don't think it's going anywhere. So let this dry for a bit and uh, put a few fasteners in and then on to some more window framing. So I've got a couple members for uh, little windows up in the bed area. This one has a slight crown. So I just want to look off the middle a little bit here. It's a lot better. Then I'm just going to work the two ends. And avoid the middle to take out that little bit of a crown. too thin here. Uh, I'll check the other ones. Uh, this one's not terrible. Just flatten it out a little bit. Okay, should do a little, little tiny bit of a twist. Very wavy piece, you can hear it. Taking off the high spots. Okay, that's pretty good. It's just framing material and let's go crazy. Right, so I'm gonna install these and then I'm ready to route some holes. So I got my pieces for framing my windows. Okay. So 
I'm about to frame in the bed area windows. I've got a couple little spacers slash little mini jack studs. I don't want to reduce the width too much, but uh, I did cut this one a tiny little bit short. So I just want something for it to sit on until the glue dries. It'll add a little bit of support, but anyway. That's what is happening now. It's kind of a pain to get up here. So my bench seat goes in. I glue these little kids in. Do some on the back side here. Okay, actually I will add some here. So, we can hold that. It's not really structural, but oops. Getting blue everywhere. screws in from the sides. Right. So I'm going to secure that with a few screws and uh, then I'll put some staples from the outside, repeat on the other side. And we are one window frame away from cutting these holes out. So I just ripped some pieces uh, for the front window and the front of the bed area. And also I'm ripping some extra stock. I'm gonna rip a couple more things up uh, to go in between the rafters, just for some support when I put the ceiling paneling on. So I'm gonna to continue to do that. And then we're gonna make a front window. Also one thing I wanna do before I forget is uh, I gotta strike a couple lines and just staple from the outside uh, the small window framing we had just put in. So I'm going to do that now.
It's gluing time. Okay. I won't lie, I filmed this video. <laughs> and these pieces were ever so slightly big. I made one slight miscalculation. Anyway, so what I'm doing is uh, I've done it on the other sides already. I'm gonna do it on these freshly cut sides. Where's that little, where's my little thing? Here it is. Uh, so what I like to do on the little miters, spread your glue. You take like a razor knife and you force it into the grain. And then you let it dry for a couple minutes. Five tops probably. Uh, miters are partly end grain and partly long grain. They're kind of a hybrid. But they're quite thirsty. So normally if you're making a small jewelry box or something, I would still reinforce the corners, some splines or something. You can do decorative. In this case, I'm probably just gonna use a couple of brad nails. This is just for a rough frame opening. Okay, so. While we wait, just going piece of tape the corner put a long piece reinforcing all of those. Tape is a little bit wider than my pieces. It's kind of a pain, but it works. So we'll spread some glue. do stand it up roll it over boink and then tape off our last corner okay Sit for a couple minutes, and then I'll probably put a couple uh, nails in it, and we are ready to put that on the camper. Well, it's the last of the rough framed openings. Time to drill some holes and route some plywood. Okay, I just took a few minutes. I emptied the tools out of here. It's about to get pretty dusty. Some routing to do of my freshly framed openings. Uh, the only thing really left in here is a little bit of weight and that plank for working up there. It was a little tippy up there earlier, or at least it was feeling the back end was lifting a bit. So I threw a bit of weight in here. Made me feel a little bit better about working up there. So I'm gonna just uh, set up the router, drill a couple of starter holes and Let's plunge, baby. Okay, so we're about to rout. Firstly, we need a hole. I'm gonna try this first one with just routing. It's only quarter inch plywood, it should be fine. If I find it to be a hassle, I can always jigsaw the bulk of it, leave about a quarter inch to route off, and do it that way. First thing I'm gonna do is start a hole from the inside. Poking through, come out this way. Uh, this way, these bits have a tendency to blow the back of the plywood. So this way, any damage will be on the inside and contained. There we go. Why such a big hole? Because we have a big router bit. 
This is the router we're going to use. It's a three and a quarter horsepower Porter cable. And we have a template bit set up, or a pattern routing bit, whatever you want to call it. This one actually has a bearing above and below. It's pretty handy. You don't have to switch back because there's often times when you need a top bearing or a bottom bearing, depending on your application. This one saves you from changing bits. You can just use your change of the height. So I'm going to set this up, plug it in, and we're going to route a hole. I've got my bit set for depth of my material. And we're going to be going, because it's the inside of a frame, we're going to be going clockwise. So our cutter is always cutting into the wood. Here we go. Probably should have really put on a mask for that. I might go get one. Well, there you go. One window rough opening. So I'm gonna take a probably a one eighth round over bit, maybe a quarter. I'll do a test and see. I wanna soften the edge so when I do my canvas, it'll just be a nicer transition than a hard corner. Soften that heiress, as it were. Uh, one thing I will say is I routed the bottom first. So when I did the other ones, uh, gravity wasn't pushing the panel down on my bit. So if I started here and route it, as I'm trying to route the last of the panel, gravity wants to push the panel onto it and uh, it might send that panel flying. It, it could cause a lot of problems, potentially dangerous, uh, at least at the very least annoying. So I always route the bottom first and it ended up, it was felt pretty good. So one handy thing about having that double bearing bit is that I can't actually route from the outside like I'm doing the other windows because the router will bang into this wall. This is right against it. So I can actually get it from the top using the opposite bearing of the one I was using on the outside. And I can just route from inside here. So if I to change bits, I just change the height. Pretty handy. See? But I uh, ended up putting a 1 8 round over the small trim router it's just to help in the fabric wraps. I was debating doing a quarter, but I mean, there's going to be this is a rough opening, so it's just really to help the fabric go around the corner. And there's going to be a frame in here, and there's also going to be an exterior and an interior trim frame. So I think 1 8 should do it. The only place that I couldn't route all the way was here. I could only basically get to there. 
so I will have to finish the rest just with a sanding block. Probably won't even matter, but it was just it's too close to this. You can't always route near adjacent surfaces. Yeah, there's my little bed area. It's my little peephole. So by the time the, actually the window is finished, it's not gonna be very big, but enough to see out the front anyway. And I always pictured it as a diamond or maybe a circle, but I went square piece of glass. But uh, I think just turning it to be a shape like a diamond just adds a little something to it. So I'm just gonna vacuum all this crap up. Probably gonna do a little bit of bondo work on some of the heavier stuff. Just some of the heavier fills can dry overnight. There's not a ton of it, there's some screw holes and a little bit of stuff. So I'd like it to dry overnight so it can shrink and you can do maybe one more little top coat. And then I'm gonna turn this baby on its side, possibly on its roof so I can do the underside of the wings and the underside of this. Uh, actually, if I get it right up on its roof, I'll probably do this and this and that and that. And I'll right side it up. Anyway, we'll see. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with the progress so far. It's getting kind of late and I'm feeling pretty dirty and dusty. So I'm going to clean up a little bit, do a little bit of bondoing. I might work out the framing for my propane area because I do have to cut a vent hole and a vent hole for my fridge. I'm not sure where I'm going to do that just yet. I know the propane's going to be down low. So that I might not do tonight. Anyway, pretty productive day. Oh, I've been waiting so long to do these dang window holes. I was quite tentative. And it felt so it felt so final making that decision and plunging that drill bit in there and that router. But it really opens it up. And it was very necessary to do the next step of the outside skin. So pretty happy everybody. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up if you want and uh, subscribe if you want to follow along. Thanks for watching everybody.